This is Saturday Morning Mysteries. And we're your hosts, Alexis and Grace. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of Saturday Morning Mysteries, where we're your hosts. I'm Alexis. I'm Grace. And Grace, we're matching today. Isn't that great? <laughs> we we didn't even call each other before we we logged on. Damn it. I was so we <laughs> behind the scenes, we like record multiple episodes in a row. And oh, I yeah, was already right. planning on my uh, the next episode where I do the intro to be like, for those of you watching the YouTube video, you'll see that we're matching, but mm-hmm. you Got the perks first. of you going first today, <laughs> aka me being the first to introduce so us. You get to have yeah. the line. Yeah. This is a great plug for our YouTube page. I, damn it. Now you watching. okay, you stole that out of my yes. mouth now. Go for it. <laughs> um, that's it. Uh Sat Morn Mist, yeah. uh, or Saturday Morning Mysteries YouTube. Um, yep. see what we won't say what we're wearing that's matching, <laughs> but it's so exciting. You won't believe that we wow. happen to wear. A fashionistas. Uh-huh. You won't eat, I bet you don't even have something like this in your closet. Probably not. Very no. few people do. Very few millennials in America have what we've got on right now. Yeah. So like check it. <laughs> people are gonna like unsubscribe after they check. <laughs> These bitches. <laughs> These people are misleading. Yeah. Uh... Misrepresentation, fraud. Uh, anyway, so, yep, we're back to do another episode of Totally Spies, and today it is Grace's turn to tell us about the shenanigans and destruction that they caused today, or, I mean, prevent today. I mean, today. uh, human and protection. Human One. protection. Who's One. the single human that they will be protecting today? <laughs> so, yeah. um, so, today I am doing, um... Episode 20 from season two of Totally Spies. And what really sold me on this episode was that it takes place in Liverpool, England, primarily. Hmm. AKA, we're going to have some shitty accents today. (laughs) Yes. Uh Uh-huh. Can't wait. And Liverpool especially is a really hard accent to do. So if you think of like, if you ever heard the Beatles speak, like Mm. mainly like Paul and especially like John and... um, I think George is also from Liverpool. I can't remember if George or Ringo are. Whoops. Not Anyways, Ringo, always the they, black sheep of the group. Know, <laughs> wherever he's from. Yeah. So, um, yeah, their accent's really hard to do. I cannot do it. So we're just going to do a bunch of random British accents this episode. That works. See where it lands. We're, to us Americans, it's all the same. <laughs> it's all the same. I also like to imagine that in your prep work for this episode, you just like listen to a bunch of Beatles interviews <laughs> and like Beatles music, but like tangent it, like the tangents down, like listening to all this music and stuff. You're like, oh shit, that's right. You can't hear the accents when they sing. Discography yeah. again. <laughs> this is yeah. research. <laughs> um no i should have done that i should have even right before we recorded looked up to remind myself what a liverpool accent's like did i no Mm-mm. whatever yolo there's also a queen's accent in this which is a queen's english is totally different as well so oh good luck I'm, you just taught me Listeners. something new like i said yeah. i just group them all together all i know is there was like welsh and there's like the other kind all we <laughs> know all is that we won the revolutionary war so we don't have to know <laughs> so we don't so we don't have those accents <laughs> uh, so we don't have to learn which accent is which in england so nice. our cold open today starts in the liverpool library with the head librarian she is this very like meek looking blonde woman she's middle age we know she's meek because she's got a big sweater and like big thick glasses on she's working at the front desk and this huge hulking man comes up and like slams some books down on her desk um she starts to go through them kind of like intimidated because he's like this huge like bodybuilder looking bro and she tells him that the books are all overdue so he owes some fees which I, yet again, am legally obligated to bring up when Alexis, (laughs) she started laughing before I even started saying this. Like, man, I I resonate with this guy. (laughs) We did our senior thesis project and Burr just kept her books from the downtown library for way too long. 
<laughs> There's not a single library that I haven't just like hoarded books from. And yeah. It's like a thing in my family, CDs, books, you name it. Yep. Yeah. So I just, again, I must always mention it. Cincinnati Downtown Library. If you're missing some research books. Don't, don't call me. Was I've, 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 I've fled the state. <laughs> I can't legally get them back from me. They're going to extradite you. The Cincinnati Library extra tight. I'll be like banned from DC and Maryland libraries. <laughs> oh my god, which are like all incredible, especially in I know. DC. Yeah, that would be so sad to be banned oh, from a man. library. Oh, wow. Well, anyway, oh, well. I'll let so, you know how it is. <laughs> so Alexis owes like eight thousand dollars, probably in overdue fees. By now, yeah, at this the point. interest uh, up. exactly inflation. <laughs> 10,000 at mm. least. Yeah. If you can't find a book at your library that they're, they're like sure that they have it, like, yo, I probably <laughs> am the one that has it and never returned it. Yeah. Was it Cincinnati <laughs> or DC? Mm-hmm. We know whose name was on the yo. inside of that or <laughs> Ursuline Academy. <laughs> Dude, even my grade school, so many, like literally <laughs> everywhere I go, if there's a library, I'm going to keep books <laughs> from it for way too long slash forever. <laughs> so Anyways. <no> <laughs> Anyways, support your local libraries, everyone. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> unlike this man who is refusing to pay his overdue fees um, mm. and she's kind of like shouting after him, I think he like insults her or something like that and just like stalks away but as we see him like storm out again not paying for his overdue fees the little librarian is just kind of like accepting her fate and we see in like the um the aisles of the library some like someone's lurking back there and we see that this person you can't really tell it's all shadowed has some type of amulet on and the bright light starts shining from it towards the librarian. And as it shines towards her, we see her eyes and her pupils go wide. And she leaps mm. suddenly from behind the desk, runs up to that huge man, grabs his arm and goes full WWE, throws him over her shoulder and onto the ground and starts Ooh. beating the shit out of him. She gonna get her fees. This is why Bird doesn't go back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, go on, get whooped. I got attacked. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And from the bookshelves, we see you from that shadowy figure, a smile. And that's it. Mm. Until we hop back to our side of the pond. And our spies are at Beverly Hills Mall at a CD store. Um, which is now the second time I've brought up a CD store in these episodes because... This was the 90s, I guess, early 2000s. Yeah, early Let's 2000s. remember, I'm not yeah. saying CD as an S E E D Y, like CD. <laughs> a CD store. Yeah, See people like selling stores. stuff out of their jackets, yeah, out of exactly. their coats. Pretty seedy in here. Yeah. Wow. I mean, maybe it was Beverly Hills. There's nothing CD. Well, yeah. Not in the mall. Well, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Anyway. Anyways, <laughs> so this CD store has, you know, big TVs playing. It's playing hilariously what's called the m channel aka mm -hmm. mtv yeah and the host is this man this guy named hansen carter aka like carson daly on yeah. mtv because they were just playing music videos hansen carter also funny because like the hansen brothers the carters and like, like aaron, aaron yeah. carter yeah like they're yeah, they funny. they knew what they were doing um he is like a dj who's playing requests and music videos and obviously, Clover is in love with him. Um, on the TV, she's just in the TV or CD store watching, so in love. Hanson Carter announces that they are opening up a contest to let you, yes, you, be the co-host DJ for a day. Ooh. So all you have to do is submit a tape of yourself explaining why you deserve to co-host with me, Hanson Carter, on the M channel. So, of course, Clover is down to clown so they can meet up, fall in love, et cetera, et cetera. And Alex and Sam are in there, too, just looking at CDs, hanging out, like, ignoring like, Clover, Okay, cool, obviously. Clover, cool. You're, as per usual, boy crazy. <laughs> yeah, but they're not even blinking an eye. 
But cool. as per usual, this is when once, you know, obviously Clover is in love with someone, they get sucked down or up or over <laughs> or into <laughs> Whoop headquarters. <laughs> I don't remember how they got there this time. Uh, but, but they got sucked though, that somehow. They were there, the then they portaled. Them. Now they're in Jerry's office. <laughs> yeah. Done. Cool. And yes, they land this time, not in like the usual like debrief room or briefing room. But in Jerry's actual office, because he is very busy today. And usually we've mentioned a couple of times when they get sucked into headquarters, Jerry kind of like giggles being like, <laughs> that was a good one. Like how I got them in here. But this mm-hmm. time it's the girls who start laughing because Jerry walks out of like a closet he has in his office dressed in what I can only describe as a 1400s English nobleman, like knight. What? Christopher Columbus outfit. <laughs> He's got like the white wig with like the curls, the like the pantaloons that are like super oh puffy God. at the hip and then like leggings underneath. Yeah. The like broad shouldered, very ornate jacket thing with the poofy shoulders and like tight at the waist. Um and he gracefully okay. it, ignores the girls because he is just too excited because he jerry lewis master spy and founder of whoop was invited to get knighted by the queen of england oh that's kind of cool so this is his knight outfit okay but <laughs> also, knighted. is that what you have to wear don't, can you just wear a regular suit maybe you know not. what i don't know we're not brits i we won the Revolutionary War, so I wouldn't exactly. Have to know this so we don't have to know, right? But I will say we we do go to the knighting ceremony later on in this episode. Okay, and everyone who is getting knighted is wearing this outfit. So like, okay, this is the French interpretation of what happens in England. Because remember, this is a French show, technically. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's got captioned here, so it's the French making fun of the Brits. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, we're in this together with the French. Yeah, they the, also won this, a lot of revolutions. The, exactly. The late 1700 revolutionaries. <laughs> Revolution buddies, hey! Yeah. So the girls have a lot of follow-up questions, but he ignores them saying that they need to learn about their mission ASAP, basically so they can get the fuck out of his office because he's got to go to Buckingham Palace. To Buckingham mm. Palace. There, okay. So, He explains that shit has been going down in England, but things seem to be centered around Liverpool. Recently, there's been an onslaught of very abrupt, rash, aggressive, and odd occurrences in which people's personalities suddenly very drastically change, such as, you know, so we actually, you know, in classic surveillance state mode, we see a bunch of clips. Mm -hmm. So we see the librarian throwing the dude over her shoulders, a surgeon who's meant to be like very careful and precise, suddenly can't stop dancing. Oh, thank God. (laughs) Yeah, no, we Uh can't get you grim on that one. Yeah. (laughs) Um, An army general who's usually very serious and stern, who's giving like a briefing, but as if he's giving a briefing to like a kindergarten class using hand puppets. Um, Hmm. And these incidences seem to be extremely random, seem to be growing with no rhyme or reason. Some of the people are prominent and well known, which is probably why it's getting headlines because like, it's not a crime to like change who you are and like go through a new <laughs> phase or something like that. Like, yeah, like do you? We all do yeah. it. We all have new personalities every now and then. But when it leads to setting off nukes, then we've got another issue. Then we could have some questions. Yeah, when the yeah. military general is using hand puppets. Exactly. Type of thing. Um, and again, that it's happening to famous people means mm-hmm. it's a problem for all of us. Because mm-hmm. you know it's the British the British tabloids. <laughs> So um, we have pretty standard gadgets for this mission. We've got the laser lipstick, the hairpin lockpick, earring hearing devices slash like communication devices, the suction bottom go-go boots, and vapor emitting gloves. So little gloves. Hmm. Basically, um, uh, shoot, what is it called? Um, Where people, chloroform. Oh, (laughs) shit. Chloroform gloves, I think. (laughs) Okay. So the basics. Cool. The basics. No big um, deal. Yep. And with that, they're off. They're on the spy plane heading over to Liverpool. And on the plane, Clover is working on her audition tape, basically saying, she's cool. 
Hanson Carter's cool. I'm hot. You're hot. What more do you need? Mm -hmm. She, I should have written this fully down. Is it a wild fucking outfit? She's got, I think like, again, one of her like sequins cowboy hats on like a bikini top, crazy bell bottom. Like, I don't know what was happening, but I was like, ma'am, your parents would not let you wear this outfit to be on national television. You're 16. That's how you win the audition though. They're like, oh, look at her. She's perfect for television. Exactly. She's, yeah. She's not afraid of being sexualized as at exactly. 16. Perfect Boom. child actor. We found we found your co-host or yep. your co-DJ, we whatever. Found your it girl. Yeah. So um down in Liverpool, the girls actually go directly to the librarian um to interview her, which I'm not sure what story they tell her to get in because they like go to this woman's apartment like oh maybe they're exchange students working on a school paper yeah or something i don't know they go to her home and come into it and they're just like dressed in like normal outfits asking her questions like interrogation style like over but, like, tea yeah <laughs> um you'd think over tea but no no the librarian is now absolutely fucking shredded and is working out while she explains what happened to her she ain't got time for tea unless it's pumped with steroids this lady's a bodybuilder now she's got the kind of tea is like what's it called like trend or something oh, yeah. it's like a type of steroid, steroid that's protein the tea power she has tea. time for yeah, yeah. that's it. um and so yes she explains to them that things were totally normal until last thursday where while at work i saw a sudden flash of bright light and then bam i went from weak to hella strong went from mm. meek to hella aggressive she's like full of like oh yeah again aggressive energy now like testosterone at high levels and is now competitively wrestling because she in truly a flash became like a pro like a pro at it like got not just strong but like got really fucking good at wrestling yeah out of nowhere and is also like doesn't know what to do with all this pent-up energy she suddenly has what a career arc (laughs) and now here we must speak about this career and widely speculate specifically about her possible wrestling name oh my god yes (laughs) here are some things i came up with (laughs) so the first one there's only a couple okay wild thing but spelt like oscar (laughs) wilde aka at the end okay cool the overdoer aka overdue books yes i like that the husher Mm -hmm. or what i think is the best one the dewey decimator (laughs) oh they're all good so that's tough it could be like depending on who she's fighting different uh you know kind of personas that she takes on yep yeah Yeah, exactly but she yeah She's definitely not like the very, she's not going to like play the like, I'm going to outsmart you type of wrestler. I think mm-hmm. she's going to play like, I'm here to fucking shut you down type of wrestler. Like no nonsense. So thus, I think Dewey Decimator was my that favorite. That was going to say, that's, that's my favorite too. The Husher is really good too. Mm-hmm. She'll make you permanently hush in this corner <laughs> in, in this her corner. knitted sweater, knitted by her granddaughter two years ago. Make sure you're quiet. She'll sneak up on you and hush you forever. <laughs> shh, the crowd has to shh, shh, shh when she That's comes like on stage. That's like when she's walking out. Yeah, everyone's, yeah. everyone's you shh. see a whole arena doing that. Oh, shh, shh. All right, yeah, the hushers got good crowd play. Yeah, to it. I like the Dewey decimator too. sounds intense. The overdoer, yeah. though, the overdoer, man, she will overdo those injuries to your body. Uh-huh. Exactly. like the slogans are all they're in i know these, the are merch, great. these are great the merch i think is what there. what you're establishing grace is that you have a career in <laughs> wwe like in, literally maybe. just in their marketing i'm in their, just in their marketing yeah. yeah i'll do a quick interview with them i'll make them yeah. take a little briar like what is it meyer briggs test gets another personality yeah. <laughs> I'll brand them. <laughs> You're like interviewing them, glasses on and stuff. <laughs> like, so tell me, in these situations, how would you react? <laughs> exactly. Would you rather go on vacation at the beach, in the mountains, in a city? It's like a BuzzFeed quiz. Yeah. <laughs> and then from that, I just make random puns. 
It has like, nothing to do with it at all. <laughs> they're like, yeah, wait, that doesn't, I was never a librarian. I can barely read. Don't care. Mm. Next. Next. Stamp Don't care. Them. The dolls will sell like crazy. Exactly. The action figures will sell like crazy. This next. is your personality now. <laughs> yeah. Send in the next one. So, yes. Um, yes. Thank you for t- going along with that journey with me. Mm-hmm. It was necessary. Those were all fantastic. Yes. So the girls, thank you, um, have no follow-up questions, apparently, because um, it is a pretty weird story. So they just kind of say thanks and leave. Um, and as they're heading out, Clover and Alex are discussing this and like kind of in a mean 16 year old Beverly Hills girl way, kind of being like mean about it and being like, maybe she had a freak accident. And she's just like a freak now, <laughs> which is mean. But also what the core of what they're saying is like, what are we doing here? Like, yeah, okay, true. Yeah. What's but... the, why is this sus? Like, what kind of freak accident could just like turn you to like a pro wrestler? That's... Or like maybe she did just start doing a bunch of roids. Like, yeah, we don't Which know. Which is like legal as long as I, I'm not sure what the wrestling rules are, but like yeah. in terms of criminal stuff, like, right, yeah. like you can do that. Well, it's it's international. It's not the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like the uh, Russian doping scandal. <laughs> yeah. Or something it's like, like unless that. she has to take a pee test soon, like I see no problem with this. Exactly. She's just living her life. Yeah. But as they're talking about that, yeah, being like, so what? Um, Sam, our you know, well learned global girly that she is, mm-hmm. grabs a newspaper. Unfortunately, it's from a newsstand. It's not some like British newsies child that I was hoping Aww. it would be, being like some poor child extra, handing out extra. <laughs> Please, sir, may I have some more? Please buy my paper, ma'am. In, in ripped clothing and stuff. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> no, it was just a new, more like magazine rack stand situation. Yeah, okay. But not. anyways, she's <laughs> flipping through the newspaper again, our global girly here. And she sees a very interesting article that catches her eye. That some leading wrestler there in England, he had some dumb stage name. I didn't write it down. It wasn't up to my stage. It wasn't as good as yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so I didn't even bother. Just announced his retirement at the peak of his career in order to lead a simpler, quieter life. So this, I mean, could be a total coincidence. He probably has a lot of concussions. Mm-hmm. Probably wants to retire, maybe get into acting as many of them do. <laughs> um, but they don't really have anything else to do. So they're just like, well, I guess we'll go talk to him about his sudden decision. We yeah. guess he's a wrestler. That librarian wants to be a wrestler. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. maybe we could do a meet cute for them. <laughs> Yeah. Like we might as well while we're in town. Think of all the things they can talk about. Exactly. So they head to where all the pros train in Liverpool, which never in my life have I associated Liverpool with wrestling, but whatever. Yeah. There's a gym there. Where the <laughs> there's wrestling- a gym. <laughs> A single gym there. A <laughs> One. Gym. So apparently that's the headquarters of training for wrestling. Of all English, yeah. English wrestling. Yeah. So um, they head there and the wrestler is gathering the rest of his things. And hilariously, <laughs> not just reading his new books, but like in the gym, there's like a like a study like lounge chair. And he is surrounded by books saying... Mm. Yes, wrestling used to be my life, but now, well, since last Thursday, all I've wanted is just a just a good book. And smartly, because these girls are actually sometimes good at investigating, they mm-hmm. ask if he knows the head librarian at the Liverpool library, thinking like, you know what? Maybe they're just friends and have like rubbed off on each other. Like yeah. you get friends into the things that you're into too. Yeah. So like maybe. But he has no idea who she is. Um, hmm. And the girls are being like, okay, this is uh, kind of weird. Like, kind of feels like opposite day going on, but with personalities. But like, mm-hmm. they don't know each other. They don't run in the same circles. Although, you know, that's probably about to change since, you know, she's going pro unless she gets roided out or he's going to go. Actually, I do think he's he'll like, be the librarian. I think he does say something along the lines of like, oh, because they're like, she's not there anymore. And I think he does mention like, oh, are they hiring or something yeah. like that? 
But now's my time. Yes. <laughs> instead of going back to their new librarian friend um, and just asking her like, hey, leading up to that bright light moment, like, what'd you do that day? They instead quick change into their librarian outfits, which are like oh. pencil skirts and like blazers and like glasses to be like, we are librarians now? Hmm. Like they look like they should be going to like a bit like a board meeting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like to London board meeting somewhere. But huh. whatever, that's what they decide to wear because they need an okay. undercover outfit change. It's, they're too cool for libraries, Grace, so they don't know what librarians actually look like. <laughs> like so I true. think this is what they wear. Yeah, you don't read what books. Nerds wear. Yeah, suits. I guess. When like Jerry's in a suit every day, yeah. they absolutely they think totally he's a nerd. Think, exactly. Yeah, this is what they based it on. <laughs> so um, they just put the outfits on they just walk right behind the front desk and just go through the drawers like in the middle of the day um, okay <laughs> and they find the head librarian's work planner aka like a written calendar she didn't have a palm pilot or a blackberry this was mm, 2002 back in the day yeah. still pencil to paper librarian mm-hmm. so yeah they're hoping basically to be like it did someone come and go that like would have had a connection to the wrestler somehow like what's out of the ordinary but they do see it on the calendar because there's like nothing crazy there it's like normal appointments and meetings that they do see something which like this feels like a big violation on the spy's part because she okay. had an appointment with, with a doctor someone named oh, dr no. gray so like HIPAA situation going on. Like, this yeah. is like someone's personal. Getting, yeah. Whatever. Privacy. But, but you know, surveillance state. <laughs> Sam gets out that super compactor and looks up Dr. Gray's in the area. Oh <laughs> so, of oh course, God. a profile comes up saying that Dr. Gray is a very successful shrink, aka therapist of some sorts, some type of psychiatrist who treats a swath of people. He's well known for, I think it seems like just not um, uh, specializing in any one type of like matter, but does it all. And at least in the compact or at least, so he probably has like some type of specialty, whatever, but you know, clients that they can see on the compactor because surveillance state, maybe they don't have HIPAA in England. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, the clients range from teachers to high-ranking military officials and celebrities like oh, the wow. pro wrestler who just retired. Mm. So bam. Shrink for the stars. Shrink for the stars. And the average Joes. And the average Joes like this librarian. So yeah. that's now our possible connection is that they share a shrink. Hmm. So there's like not a lot of like in this episode, like let's go undercover because they just find his address and go to his house and ring his doorbell they're just like going to people's houses yeah. they're like oh you know when when in liverpool i yeah, guess yeah i think they're just people like light, like the brits saw like the brits yeah i think they're just like we don't know what the crime is so what are we undercover for We're, we'll just go yeah. ask these people like we don't know what's going on still so yeah they stroll right up to his house and ring the doorbell um i will say this like being respectful of like yeah being p- a polite british person doesn't last long because mm-hmm. no one answers the door and within six seconds they break in oh cool awesome they're just like and no our home? first our first crime i think of the episode yes our first actual <laughs> cro- blatant crime of this episode yeah, cool exactly. is, is t- carried out by our heroes our spies <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yes. in the classic american way Mm-hmm. You gotta mm-hmm. spend money to make money. You gotta crack some yeah. eggs to make an omelet here, people. Exactly. <laughs> is what they're saying. <laughs> so they break in and immediately split up to search the house using you know their little communication devices to stay mm-hmm. in touch with each other as they search. But as they search this house, nothing seems sus. It's like some rich dude's house with like really tacky like decor. It's like kind of a creepy house, but it's mainly just like because it's tacky like being like it basically feels like you're at like a british museum of like Mm -hmm. here's a bunch of like old giant paintings here's like Uh, some like knights suits of armor like here's Uh, just like very like um, like gaudy 
Yeah, very gaudy. Yeah. That's the perfect word for it. Mm. Um, I don't like, like this guy already. Yeah, Tad <laughs> Clover is literally just like ugh, gross. Of course, yeah, of course, Clover. Of course, she is. Um, Alex, we see, is in the library of the house, which, like, what a dream come true. I'll forgive him yes. a little bit. He has a full, yeah. like, wall to wall, floor to ceiling library, mm-hmm. which is probably why he'll cater to the everyday librarian because he understands <laughs> them. Mm-hmm. Um, but as she's walking around it, she suddenly starts to get major feedback on her like earring communication device thing. And she follows the feedback like to like make like what's like making it stronger. She goes in that direction until she ends up in the corner of the library where there's some disheveled books. And she pulls one of them out, like kind of trying to explain to Alex and Clover what she's doing, but starting to get staticky on their end. And of course, she pulls one out and bam, the door spins, aka the wall of books Ah. is a door, spins, the motion of it, flings her behind the bookshelf before it goes back to normal, and Alex's line goes dead. So Sam and Clover are obviously freaking the fuck out, because all they hear is static on her end. Mm -hmm. And Sam knew she was in the library and starts running towards it when, in classic creepy house fashion... A trap door opens up underneath oh her, and now her line also goes static. So, oh. not just Clover. This is like a horror house. Uh-huh. Like a torture mansion. Uh-huh, exactly. Like, cool. why are there so many things? If this was, like, Scooby-Doo, there's a million of these houses, and it'd be like, oh, cute, funny. But this show has showed us that all of the villains are, like, violent clinically yeah, yeah. clinically Insane. like sociopath and psychopath yeah. so like yeah. clover rightfully is freaked the fuck out mm-hmm. and very smartly stays in the same spot and does not move because <laughs> yeah. clearly touching shit and moving around too much sets off traps booby traps all over this place <laughs> uh-huh but since she's essentially frozen in place now she needs reinforcements to like scan this house, scope this house, see what's going on. Mm-hmm. So she calls Jerry. Nice. But at that very moment, Jerry is at Buckingham Palace in his oh, old right. school costume, sitting mm-hmm. right next to the queen, charming her with one of his stories of being an international master spy. And his hey. whoop phone starts to ring and ring. And ring. And so eventually Jerry is like, Oh, I'm I'm terribly sorry, uh, your majesty, but give me one moment. And she it's not like very pleased because, like, correct. You're with the queen. You pay attention yeah. to the queen. Jerry, you have an out-of-office signal on it and get like your deputy director to take yeah, charge. Yeah, right. But as soon as he picks it up, Clover is like whisper screaming, like. Jerry, get the fuck over here. Send surveillance. This is bad. Alex and Sam just went MIA. I can't move. I'm trapped too. Jerry awkwardly is like, oh, um, pardon me. Uh, where's, where's, where's the loo? I must use the restroom. I'll be right back. She's Someone like, just called me to remind me that I needed to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Which like, also like he's an international spy. He could be like, Sorry, Queen. I Sorry, gotta go man. save the world again. Yeah, and she kiss like, her oh hand. God, yeah. Leave. She give knights him twice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like that's what I would have fucking done if I were yeah. him. Whatevs. Yeah. Uh, Flex yes. that muscle. <laughs> yep. Exactly. And we get to see fucking Jerry in action fully mm. this episode. So to get to Clover, he fucking gets on his fighter jet that was probably hovering just outside of Buckingham Palace. <laughs> he hilariously is still in the same outfit, but he puts his like military like jet like helmet on, like mask thing down and just like zooms over to her and then fucking ejects himself from the plane and lands perfectly down the chimney like a British Santa Claus. <laughs> Like Mary right, Poppins. Like Mary Poppins right next yeah. to Clover in the room that she is stuck in. She's wow. like, pretty fucking impressed, as was I. Um, yeah. I don't know what happened. To, did his plane crash? Is it just on like <laughs> it's autopilot? Like, still flying. Yeah. Is it just like a like loyal Just hovering over this hover? murder mansion now? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're not sure. Cool. But yes, Clover explains um, basically, one, what happened to them so far in the house, and two, that she's just like, 
we don't know what the fuck is going on. Like, it feels like she's like the best we could come up with, with is like, yeah, it's like personality opposite day. Like these people's personalities are being switched. And like, I don't know why that doesn't make any sense. Again, people have the freedom to change their personalities. Like what's the big deal? Mm-hmm. But all about a revolution or a renaissance of an a individual. A renaissance Go era. Just yeah. like Beyonce. Yes. <laughs> Jerry, the true master spy, immediately notices what somehow they all missed, which is on the desk um, in this room uh, is this giant gold and turquoise amulet. Um, And Jerry is like, oh, interesting. You said this guy's like a a therapist. Is he a therapist? And Clover is like, yeah, we don't know what kind. Like we couldn't get all the whole scoop. And Jerry's like, oh, interesting. And he like, walks over to it he doesn't fucking care about traps he's a master spy and he Mm -hmm. explains that like oh this particular type of amulet is actually used in hypnotherapy but he picks it up and notes that like huh like this is actually way too heavy to be used in hypnotherapy like this it looks like it's a hypnotherapist like um amulet but it's like Mm -hmm. way heavier Not because it's made of like gold or something like that, but like as they kind of pick it up, moving around, they see that it's like mechanical. There's something happening in it. They're actually able to like, they see a button that they think is going to like open up like the back of it or something like that. So they're like, well, this is strange. And as they're holding it, the lights in this dark room turn on and in walks What I can only describe as, and I think it's funny, like in in multiple of my episodes, this is now not the first time that I've referenced an old movie to describe like a character in this show. Mm -hmm. Oh no. As a superhero fan, I know you will understand my reference here. Oh no. no. I can only describe as the 1992 tim burton batman oh. returns oh my god Danny devito as the penguin i just rewatched that movie not that long ago. Yeah. it's on max if anyone wants to watch it wow so, oh my god that's Danny that makes this whole house devito. even more terrifying immediately <laughs> i will say instead of like the greasy down the hair like yeah. long hair he's got kind of yeah. like the spikier like spiky hair okay. out to the side but still with the bald patch, long, scary nose. Dana yeah, Vita sure. Stature. Maybe like, yeah, okay. Yeah, like hasn't slept in a long time. Mm-hmm. Long let go of taking care of himself. Crazed, et cetera, People et cetera. like trust this guy as their shrink. They're <laughs> desperate. Like, what trauma like, are these people on their last going leg. through? Yeah. That like, this is who they came to. They're like, you know, you look like you could help me. You look like you've been through, through this shit. difficult phase. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> have I'm you going, been living in a sewer for the past several years my life feels like a sewer and you look like a sewer so maybe you can help so, me get out of it help me <laughs> teach me how you got out of the sewer exactly. dr gray or dr gray dr is. sewer yeah. Yeah. you know what we're literally the rest of the time i've only just written danny devito <laughs> nice. penguin, so i'm here for it but we're going to refer to Go him for as it. now. Helps to visualize. Yeah, I just want to keep emphasizing The creepiness that. of this dude. Yeah, like cool. he's, yeah, got like kind of like the chubby cheeks, but like also are wrinkly at the same time. It's just like, like very cool. like a jaundice like yeah. Danny DeVito was. Maybe a little less so than him. But anyways. Not to shame people who look a certain way. But. But. Y'all look like. Dude, sounds so terrifying. Like, <laughs> yeah. But y'all are super people. <laughs> but you look like a sewer person. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's what Clover's thinking. She's like, oh, ew. Ew. That explains uh, this house. Gross. I should have he actually known. The trap door that Sam fell down just leads into a sewer. <laughs> <laughs> the bookshelf that Alex got trapped behind. Sewer. Boom. Also sewer. They're all, all just sewer. sewer. All goes yeah. to the sewer. That's yeah. where he's found all of his um, home decorations. Also, is just yeah. picks them out of the sewer. People, people throwing their stuff out, and then so people throw like a night a night <laughs> exactly. down, the down the sewer. Yeah. Shh. down the sewer. <laughs> but cool. yes, so Danny DeVito walks in and explains that like you're correct. 
Also, actually, by the way, there's a lot of quotes from him. For some reason, he doesn't have a British accent. He oh. has like this like weird like German, Russian, English, American situation going on. We're not even gonna try and figure out what it was, but a man of many cultures. You know what, Danny DeVito, shapeshifter. Yeah. He takes a little piece of every country with him when yes, he goes. To inspire himself. <laughs> yeah. So um, yes, he does ex- confirm that, like, yes, I do do hypnotherapy. Um, and yes, I use that amulet for it, but or I use an amulet for it, but this specific amulet is actually his latest piece of research in the field. So I guess he's also a leading expert in hypnotherapy. That's why so many people go to him. It's a highly potent and controversial behavior adjuster is what it's called. He describes it as controversial. Like that's the name. Oh, Oh, okay. So so he knows that he's like, he's on, he's in a gray area. (laughs) He's in a doctor gray area, if you will. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) I was still thinking of his name as Danny DeVito. Uh, yeah. No, he lives for the controversy. Yes. Um, and Ale- Clover and Jerry are like, um, excuse me, what exactly do you mean behavior adjuster amulet? What? Dive into that a little more. Yeah. But as they're asking him to do that, um, a couple men in terrifying, like what I've realized in this moment is like a very scary thing to see in all white jumpsuits come out of like seemingly nowhere, like from other trap doors and grab the two of them. It made me think of like Shutter Island. Like, yeah. Any And also like uh, the like lobotomy episode of yours, like anytime like people stoically in matching suits. But again, there's something about just like a full white. The white ones. Medical Ask but like not jumpsuit that like mm-hmm. mm-mm, you won't be involved in that get out yeah. of there um Mine. but yes as soon as the men in the white jumpsuits they come out and grab clover and uh jerry and danny devito is able to grab the amulet out of their hands in that moment and the penguin continues to explain that this just a jester thing allows him to alter the personality of anyone he sees fit. But don't Hmm. worry, I've been ethical and only used it on my actual patients so far. Which, like... Was there informed consent? Yeah, I know you were going to do that. (laughs) I haven't read a lot of terms and conditions in my life or, like, medical forms. I just sign things, but, like... I'm going to start reading them now after this episode because yeah. it's yeah. unclear. Yeah. But it makes me think, TBH, that no, there probably was not consent because he continues to say that like, no, 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 no. Don't think that I'm just using it willy nilly on my patients. That's unethical. I've only been using it on my most annoying patients. Oh. Because all they do is complain and bitch and moan about things. Ah. And if they would just freaking learn to walk in someone else's shoes, have some empathy for someone else, they would see life in a whole new perspective. Which like, okay, let's pause here for a few things. One, is this what my therapist thinks about me? <laughs> Is she going to behavior adjust me? <laughs> two. Behavior adjust. It sounds so <laughs> violent. Yeah, two. Um, yes, exactly. Violent. Sir, this is not the way to go about things. Aren't you supposed to help them see things from a new perspective through your words? Yeah, exactly. Not your actions. I was going to say, I agree with this conclusion, but not the formula yeah, he's yeah, using like, to reach it. Yeah, like a like, lot of the villains. It sounds to me like he needs a new profession. If he thinks like, oh, my clients are so annoying. Like, you're a psychiatrist or like a therapist. (laughs) Like, yeah, all of your clients are going to be annoying. That's your job to make them not annoying. Signed up for. You are the safe space to be annoying. Yeah. Like, to be, like, so unadulterated annoying in that space. And, like, okay. (sighs) Yeah, like what you said of, like, the baseline the inspiration is a good thing yeah like have empathy for one another Mm -hmm. see 
you know, your problems from another point of view, which also like side note though, like is diminishing of people's problems, like which ain't cool. True. Yeah. The way he phrases it, not great. But yeah, like, yeah. But like yeah. you get the sentiment. Of Show like, people a different perspective exactly. so that they can greater appreciate their own lives. Exactly. Definitely. Which like, but <laughs> I want to pause here as well for kind of like my third thing. A controversial opinion here. Like, like Dr. Gray. Like Dr. Li- Gray. She lives for like controversy. <laughs> we live for the hot ta- <laughs> hot takes here of like, I don't know. Like if we had a tool like this and we could like use it on our politicians oh. once they pass certain policies, like oh. God, this know. is music to my ears. <laughs> I know. So like, I don't know. <laughs> He might not be the worst. I think he's just bad. using it on the wrong people. Yeah. He thinks he's using it on the right people, but no, there are there are some people who would greatly benefit from yeah, this, so and thus like, the world as a whole would benefit from it. Yeah, so I don't know. It's true. Like, it's true. Danny's got some not horrible uh, ideas here. We got, we've officially got a complex villain slash anti-hero <laughs> here, you guys. We just flipped the script. Yep, exactly. We've yeah, entered I mean, the gray yeah. area. <laughs> We're in the gray zone. <laughs> the Twilight, um, music, Twilight Zone music starts. <laughs> the gray zone. So, so also, though, and I will add as a little plus to him, he at least is considering the ethics of what he's doing he's not just like yeah willy-nilly firing this ambulance off hungry. at anybody yeah exactly he's like no no no. i'm picking wisely who i use this on do i agree with those ethics not necessarily but at least he has some moral some compass <laughs> well yeah. and i'm actually like until we read my next paragraph in mm-hmm. which we will have we'll leave the gray zone the gray okay. area well i but like it while we're here I so think i'll that, enjoy like, it now i also yeah savor it while we continue mm-hmm. to speculate because i am now realizing too that like maybe part of it including why he looks the way he does is that he's like so strung out on like some of these patients Aww. being like nothing can fucking help them i have tried everything i started i am a doctor and i'm using hypnotherapy that's how desperate i've gotten with these people yeah. like i need to try something and he's just like gone fucking crazy trying to help these people and that's why he's like looks strung out and that he's like yeah. this is my last this is my only option at this point like i've i've reached my limit like this is all i can do i push comes to shove i gotta switch their personalities We've all been there. Gray zone to get true. Very true. (laughs) And it is stressful. Get gray hairs from that shit. Mm -hmm. I just want to imagine before we leave this gray zone, I still want to savor it. it. What could the librarian possibly be like saying? (laughs) Well, not even that, but like, what could she possibly be saying that is like, has him like pulling his hair out? Like she's the worst. This like poor little nice meek library. Maybe she just like gets pushed around in her life so much. She can't mm. handle confrontation. Like if someone gets her coffee order wrong, she won't even send it back. And she comes in to bitch about it. And he's just like, mm. send the fucking Lady. order back. It's their job. <laughs> yeah. To get your order right. Oh my God. And so he, yeah, just last. So straw. frustrating. So bad. That's it. I'm brain switching her with a WWE wrestler. Done. Fuck it. Done. She's gonna be right now. Only about confrontation now. Yeah. The Husher. <laughs> Confrontation's her middle fucking name. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, let's leave this wow. warm, cozy, gray area. Okay. Because the penguin goes on to explain that you know he's realized like switching personality thing it's pretty cool and like Mm -hmm. all of our criminals he's realized i could be power hungry i'm I'm gonna be power hungry with this shit like i started at like zero you know went to 10 i'm taking up to 110 now oh gosh (laughs) because he's decided like well i've proven that it's work i'm gonna take this all the way to the top i'm gonna switch places with the president of the united states oh shit (laughs) That's like beyond 110. Well, wow. <laughs> even more so, actually. Um, uh, we'll get into that um, 
exactly what and who he will be switching with the president because it's, okay it's not even oh, necessarily he, him but okay. he is going to switch the president's personality so i okay but honestly like we said before i mean well eh? i'm interested well, to see i'm sure yeah, yeah he, i'm interested to th- there could be potential benefit for yes, this, but it's totally spy, so I know it's going to go the opposite direction. You no, know, it's a wild direction that it goes. Mm-hmm. But before we okay. take that direction, I know we've done some wild speculating already about him, but despite like this villain monologue and also our speculating of like him getting pushed to the edge um, with uh, the uh, patients, um, they don't really go into yeah who he is or how he got to this point. Um so I would like to wildly speculate Yay. by copying and pasting the actual Penguin and Batman Returns <laughs> backstory. Awesome. Nice. With the We're going back to the sewers. <laughs> <laughs> of like that he became a hypnotherapist. So essentially, Dr. Gray was abandoned by his rich parents when he was born because he was a freaky looking little baby. <laughs> they tried to kill him by throwing in a river. AKA, I think he thinks that means people complain too much. They don't know. They weren't trying to, their parents didn't try to murder them. Why are they fucking complaining about their coffee order being wrong? But survives. And instead of being raised by animals, I don't or like by, he's raised by some fucking animal really, somewhere. Yeah, it's two penguins know. that got out of the, he's, yeah. He's raised this time by the sewers, I think. Uh, <laughs> the rats. <laughs> eventually resurfaces to become a therapist so he can understand other humans to re-enter society. But upon re-entering society, he realizes everyone's just a little bitch and complains all the time. So instead of running for mayor of Gotham City like the Penguin does, he yeah. decides to <laughs> run and go after the president of the United States to make changes that he wants to see by getting rid of ungrateful, annoying people along the way. Got it. So, um, I'm so just laughing. <laughs> he was a freaky, freaky looking baby. <laughs> I don't know why. That's so funny. Like, oh, uh, uh, in the sewer. Uh, Which I mean, yes, we're that rich. Is. We can't yeah. have a freaky looking baby. That is his story. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, and man. so here's the thing. I don't have any memory of Batman Returns. I just quickly looked at the Wikipedia page for this because I saw just him watched on it. screen. It's kind of like, fresh. This yeah. is the penguin. But like apparently, according to Wikipedia, spoiler, um, Danny DeVito dies in the end, and the penguins who raised him give him like a penguin Viking funeral at the end. Pretty much. <laughs> like send him off. Yeah. yeah. And I just like pictured yeah, as like he's like he's a like bunch of dad, little penguins with like little tuxedo bows from like <laughs> Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins coming up again. There we go. But, like with it's like cool, the so cool. um, bow and arrow on fire like, down like, <laughs> <Yeah>. the sewer. <laughs> lights the freaking whatever like, like creates like an fire, energy but it's like yeah the energy yeah. but it's made of like cardboard from the sewer so it's like falling but apart. like all the chemicals and stuff that get mixed in the sewer just explodes <laughs> like a bomb yeah a nuclear bomb Gotham <laughs> just goes up in flames exactly slash Liverpool yeah Liverpool exploded case. uh basically Gotham yeah. wow so that was extremely cool. makes sense to me. Interest. I just needed to get into this guy. I just could Fair. not. So yeah. um, Clover and Jerry are like, uh, what? And <laughs> they immediately simply just like beat the shit out of the guards who were like okay. holding them back. I will say, obviously we've seen Clover fight and stuff. It's fucking sweet to see Jerry like mm. literally just like kick the shit out of these people until it's just like a pile of bodies that they like run over and as they like run out the door and of course dr penguin gray devito here like he can't fight he's just like starting to shoot the amulet like across back and forth trying to like make sure they don't come like beat him up yeah but they obviously run out the door dodge out of the way and of course like everyone else fall into a trap door Mm. And because it's a creepy old British house, they fall mm. into a casual dungeon where oh Alex and Sam are locked away. Oh, so okay. yes, horror house. Yeah, Alex and Sam are there. They're fine I was wondering now. about them. Like they've been gone for a while. Yeah, like <laughs> they good. Are they okay? Um, yes, they're there. They're like, oh my god, thank God you guys are here. Also, like, what took you guys so long? What the fuck? Mm-hmm. And Jerry stands up because like Clover and him obviously like piled on each other. 
Mm-hmm. And Jerry stands up and like adjusts his wig because he's obviously still in it. I forgot. And says, Good God, give us a break. We've been like totally busy. And Clover says, Oh, oh no. Like, yeah, indeed. We've been like quite preoccupied. Oh no. And Alex and Sam are like, <laughs> What? <laughs> excuse me and jerry and clover are like Uh oh (laughs) excuse me and dr devita walks into the dungeon and laughs saying yes i gave them a little bit of an attitude adjustment oh no in their shock clover and jerry are even easily bested and also thrown into a dungeon now and i will say like in like I don't know, three seconds, they like very easily like break out and that kind of stuff. But spies. Mm-hmm. I do want to point out because you did say um that like, yeah, maybe raised by rats. Because before Danny Penguin leaves, he does say that he hopes they all enjoy the rats that he's about to let into like the dungeons because he's been starving them for days and days in his own personal psychological experiment. So, like, he also does psychological torture and is about to murder them? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Because, well, what kind of shrink has a bunch of rats on hand for who are already starved? Like, what? Like, that's. What? Mm. I've, we're out of the gray area. He's bad. Yeah. Or we've we've left it. We've Mm -hmm. left it long ago. Yeah. We out. They're about to get attacked by hungry, angry rats. Etc. Also, deleted scenes from Ratatouille. <laughs> <laughs> Ratatouille too. He went down to France, got them all. Yep, brought them back over the channel. Yep. Brought them right back. Yeah. So, uh, yes, he and the guards leave off to hop hop across the pond to the U.S. of A. Everyone breaks out easily. But as they do, Clover gets a call on her compactor because she apparently gets reception in this dungeon. And it turns out Hanson Carter from the M Channel wants her to co-host a oh DJ session with him. Nice. But it's filming ASAP in LA. Of course. The well, outfit works. Told you. Yep. And at the <laughs> same time, outfit always works. Jerry um, is about to be fucking knighted Look so like them. they're all so they're all so special they're all <laughs> making it in this world yeah. and so like despite the now extremely immediate crime and threats to like the world with the president of the united states it's straight up only alex and sam who fly yeah. off to dc because jerry goes back to buckingham palace and clover goes to la And they're like, you know, we'll deal with this whole personality thing later. That's a tomorrow problem. Uh... Cut to (laughs) Clover in her librarian suit from before. Oh my God, she's still wearing that. (laughs) No, she changed into it now. Oh. With her hair pulled tightly back, sitting on stage next to Hanson Carter, the DJ, filming M Channel. And she is scared scoffing at the boy band music video playing basically saying like this is trash i prefer classical music like i prefer classics classical music specifically she's like have you like any class here oh no she's it's so confusing to do what which one accent it is yeah she doesn't have the british accent she just, she just like has Jerry. his personality. It's so yeah. Confusing. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Cut to Jackson. Buckingham Palace. Oh, no. Jerry sprinting back in, like knocking over the other people who are getting knighted, saying, like, oh my God, I am like so totally entirely sorry. I'm blown away by this honor, royally blown away, in fact. Thank you like so much. <laughs> and the queen and the royal family and the entire palace are like, um, Excuse me? What? (laughs) Cut to Sam and Alex literally sprinting through the White House, flashing their whoop badges, which is giving them immediate access. Yes. Yeah. Clearance. Yep. Oval (laughs) Office, where the president is some 
nondescript southern white dude lol because it was 2002 yeah got a real thick perhaps texas accent perhaps going Um, has no clue what's going on around him (laughs) is pretty confused (laughs) Uh, and they just bust into the oval office the girls again flash their whoop badges and explain to him what's going on who the penguin is what his plan is switching this personality and bam The doors get kicked in right behind them by Danny Mm. DeVito and his two guards, Mm. which like I said, it's 2002. 9-11 was fresh. Yeah, People are just able to walk through the White House, like at least Clover. I mean, Alex and Sam had their whoop badges, but like Danny DeVito and his henchmen just strolling through. Where is the Secret Service? Yeah. Anywhere. No less someone who looks like Danny DeVito as the penguin. Yeah, I know. They're like, not sorry, you're, you're not even getting in for like visitor access uh, like, for the tours. Getting onto Pennsylvania Avenue. No. <laughs> They're seeing you, no. what you look like. They judge a book by its cover. They're carting oh, yeah. you out of there. This is the judgiest city in the country, in the <laughs> world. No yeah. less. Uh, you are not getting through those gates in yes. any way, shape, or form. So. Oh, boy. The penguin smirks and snaps his fingers for his goons to attack Jerry and Clover, saying that on the way to the United States, he basically saw how his last goons got their asses kicked. So on the way there, he switched their personalities with two like karate black belts. So now it's like an actual fucking fight. But I got my black belt in fourth grade. So I was like, what if one of them started... fighting like i did when i was like yeah. fourth grade aka like a rabid little like 10 year old just like ah! which is like definitely how i did karate when i was yeah. a child. but anyways that didn't happen they were like actual fighters now okay. um but in this fight uh oh i said jerry and clover grabbing alex and sam sorry so oh, in yeah. the fight um alex and sam put on the vapor chloroform gloves and literally mm-hmm. are able to like knock the dudes on the ground and then grab their faces with the gloves and the dudes pass out so like they chloroformed them so like whatever um then they look directly up at the penguin who is now fucking panicking because his goons are down Mm -hmm. and we kind of just see them close in on him and tie up the penguin the president finally snaps his fingers oh and by the way actually before i say what happened the penguin does reveal that he was going to switch the president's personality with a rodeo clown's personality oh. because basically being like all you are is a clown either way. So like more of a political statement than actual like um, uh, power play. I think, I think he would have changed his mind real soon and put himself in the presidency. Yeah. So, but yeah. also like is is he assuming that radio clowns are like always in character? Like just because <laughs> you're a radio clown doesn't mean you're like not a normal person outside of the rodeo. You know it's what? Like you're always he's they you're don't at have home, like still clowns just with your family in, in England. Liverpool. Yeah, especially in Liverpool that I'm aware <laughs> yeah. of. So according he thinks so, yes. Got I it. I think he thinks so. Cool. But anyways, he lived in a sewer his whole life. He doesn't have <laughs> He didn't understand the only how clown he sees work. is it, and that's it <laughs> down there. <laughs> and he's always in character, so like, yeah, true. I assume this is so, all clowns. I guess rodeo clowns are as well, right? That's it. So, um, yeah, so uh, uh, Alex and Sam tie the president or not the president, no, no, the penguin up, gotcha. and the president finally oh. snaps his fingers. And Secret Service suddenly jumps out from, like, behind hidden walls, who are absolutely all holding guns, for sure, by the way. Cool. And they just, like, grab Danny DeVito, who's all tied up. No explanation, no comments. But I would like to point out that um, Guantanamo Bay opened in 2002. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, this guy essentially just threatened the president. Mm-hmm. So I think Danny DeVito's in Guantanamo Bay, Guantanamo mm-hmm. Bay now. Like to this day. Yeah, I was going to say one of the mm-hmm. oldest prisoners there. Yeah. Danny DeVito. So wow. anyways, I guess Whoop was able to keep like some of the evidence, re-switch Clover and Jerry's personalities because now they're back to normal. 
Clover is watching footage of like the DJ Colin show and is mortified how she acted. Wow. But the studio calls her again because they were like, you were fucking weird. It got us good ratings. Want to yeah. come back? And she's like, Jerry, let's switch again. Let's switch again. Let's switch again. Let's go back. Let- yeah, 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 I'm going to be <laughs> famous. But then we learn, like, I will say this episode ends on a devastating note. Because uh-huh. after the way Jerry acted, the queen refused to give him his knighthood. Oh, uh-huh. So, like, Jerry's just sitting what? there being like, yeah, the, it's like the queen. That's all good for you, Clover. We, we cannot switch back. Like the queen didn't give me my knighthood, and Clover's like, "No, let's switch back." And Alex and Sam are like, "Clover, you freak!" And he's just like, "Like his life is ruined by this because of Aww. Clover." It's I blame so the sad. queen. <laughs> yeah, the queen was being a little bit of a bitch. Yeah, let's just say it. She just say it. His knighthood still. Cool. <laughs> But, like, she's dead, whatever. I was going to say, she's dead. She can't say anything we about that We won the Revolutionary War, so we can make yeah. fun of the queen. You know what, Jerry? You live in the USA now. And yeah. based on just saving the president, you're going to get, like, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Exactly. Which is way better mm. than any sort of knighthood Knight. from the royal family. Sir Jerry cares. Lewis. Psh, yeah. Shot. You're welcome in the USA anytime. Yeah. America. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So that's it. That's the end. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. <laughs> that's, that is pretty sad for Jerry, though. I know. He put that whole outfit on for nothing. I know. And he went to go save Clover and then ruined his life. So, yeah, the importance of out of office messages, I guess. <laughs> really taking vacation time. Very yeah. Important. And like, and maybe, I mean, I know it was a pretty big emergency, but maybe don't schedule like the girls to like, do a massive spy mission when yeah. you're about to get knighted. Kind of sounds Again. like some shit might blow up in the middle of your ceremony. Yes. You and like, be safe. learn to delegate. Give yeah. that to someone also, else. Yeah, sometimes I feel like Jerry is the only one who really works at Whoop and everyone else, like all the suits are just random bodyguards that he yeah, brings in that have him. no like managing authority or anything. Right, but all. then we see all like the science labs and like crazy like Cthulhu creatures. So like there's <laughs> other people doing research at Whoop, but like, yeah, whatever. I think Jerry's probably They, they don't like, call the shots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Jerry's like, these girls can't be trusted. I must be the ones in charge. I must be the one in yes. charge of them, but yes, but he's wow. recording that now. Yeah, I know, right? Lost that knighthood. Wow. Yep. Great so, job, though. Thank Great you. Great job. Also, this entire episode, all I wanted to see was, so you said at the beginning, there was like a military general who was using puppets. Now. Uh-huh. <laughs> he's like, God, I want to see the puppeteer who's now like the personality of a military <laughs> like general. screaming <laughs> at kindergarten. And like kids, you know. <laughs> I said, sit in your chair now. Like with puppets in his hands still, though. Like <laughs> throwing the puppets on the ground. <laughs> Drop it, give me 20. I can't count to 20. I'll set 20 down. Set 20. Yeah. Oh. What? Like picking their nose. <laughs> They're all just crying. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. There you go. Amazing. Yeah. Another villain. Well, you gave him a good, uh, a good backstory, or at least kind of wildly speculated a good backstory, yeah. because otherwise I would be like, man, who hurt you? Yeah, but- truly. Yeah, I'd say being thrown into a sewer by parents who didn't love you as an infant. Yeah. And then being raised by rats would, it it might lead one to do that. Yeah. And you know what? Like, it also, I would also think humans are annoying if they tried to drown me when I was a baby. And also, rats probably think humans are annoying, and that's who raised him potentially. Mm -hmm. So, like, I see where he's coming from. Again, not the worst invention we've had, but the wrong. Mm application exactly perhaps exactly. so wow yeah so Amazing. it was a very fun episode it did please go watch it the clover will, Jerry switch wait. is also very fun like to hear oh, yeah. the like voice changes which for yeah. some reason i can only do like the british talking like a valley girl but not a valley girl talking proper i can't yeah. flip the other way for some reason it but whatever exist. go watch the episode they don't talk proper nope yeah so it has yeah. it all this episode has it all we've yeah. got wrestling we've got libraries we've got mary poppin we've got batman Batman. penguin danny devito (laughs) we've got it all rodeo clown yeah rodeo clown amazing (laughs) references to 2002 political state in america yes 
Who knows? Those last two things are the same things that we just named. Whoops. (laughs) Rodeo clown, president. Who knows? Anyways. Between now and next week, who should our audience tell about this show? Hmm. Okay. This week, you should tell someone you know who is obsessed with uh, Batman comics, I guess. Because yeah, text Alexis Bird <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, my phone's ringing. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, actually, I have Batman comics behind me. Yep. Uh, yeah, and Thanks. they'll be like, "Oh my god, they literally—that's the Penguin. That's him. Mm-hmm, <laughs> that's Oswald." Mm-hmm. And anyway, who should they tell? Um, I think after that, you should tell Rodeo Clown. Nice. Go find and also ask them like, is "This you all the time." <laughs> did like your wife leave you because you couldn't get out of the makeup like <laughs> do your children hate you because you're throwing <laughs> pies in their faces <laughs> are your only friends other rodeo clowns at this point or like do you all also hate each other like <laughs> what's the scene and then ask them to comment on this video and tell us what it's like to be a rodeo clown because now nice i want to know yeah i'm considering it could use a <laughs> career change <laughs> <laughs> If Alexis's new employer is listening to this, no, yeah, she does joking. not want one. Just kidding. She is dedicated to her new job that she yes. just got. That I love is it. it. I love it. I <laughs> do not want to be a radio yet, clown. And she loves yeah, it. Does not want to be a radio clown. No. Yes. Um. Great. Well. Um. Till next week. Cool. Bye. Yeah, see you. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Saturday Morning Mysteries. If you enjoyed this episode, please share, rate, review, leave us a like, and drop a comment. We post episodes every Saturday and bonus tune tangents whenever we feel like it. So please subscribe so you don't miss the shenanigans. And if you want to follow us on YouTube, click the bell under the YouTube subscribe button to receive notifications when new videos are posted. And if you want to subscribe to the podcast, we have no idea what you're listening to us on. So just hit the big subscribe button on whatever app you're using. We we believe in you. Give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram at Satmore Mist, all the abreeds. And let us know if you have any episode or show requests by emailing Saturday Morning Mysteries at gmail.com. Thanks to Jenna Kendall for the logo design and to Ava Sakiki for the music used during this week's episode. See y'all groovy kids next week on Saturday Morning Mysteries. 